Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff I found for this episode. Over at Ars Technica, they have a really, really great walkthrough article uh, using the Zettabyte file system or ZFS uh, on Linux. It's a nice step-by-step -step guide to using ZFS on Linux. They have it, uh, this particular walkthrough is for getting it running on Ubuntu, but really uh, the instructions are generic enough that uh, you can get it uh, pretty much uh, running anywhere you want. So uh, really awesome, highly recommend it. I'm a huge fan of ZFS, uh, the FreeBSD server that I have running right behind this doorway right here is FreeBSD and ZFS. So, uh, you know, never lost any data. It's awesome. Definitely check it out. From ZDNet, seven ways to set up a multi-booting, set up multi-booting with Windows 8 and Linux. If you have a newer Windows 8 computer and you want to run Linux on it in a multi-boot type environment, this is uh, definitely an article to check out. Uh, by all means, something you want to look at. From uh, betanews.com, Samsung ditches Android for Tizen on Gear 2 smartwatch. Pretty awesome. Uh, we covered this briefly uh, in our sister show, uh, The Geekinator, but uh, for those of you who don't watch or listen to The Geekinator, in, in addition to Linux Newslog, I thought I would at least briefly uh, cover it here. Tizen, it appears, is going to be the default install uh, for Samsung's Gear 2 smartwatches. Definitely a pretty interesting. Um, Tizen has been one of those Linux-based mobile distributions that have been kind of, you know, worked on at some point in the future becoming available. It looks like finally it will become available. So pretty awesome. From China Tech News, I actually have two articles here. Uh, Ubuntu looks like is going to land on smartphones here in 2014. Uh, Chinese phone makers BQ and Miezo will uh, make the first handsets. The first story I have is from Tech World. Canonical's Ubuntu uh, Linux operating system will be launched this year on a mobile handset. BQ and Miezo, both Chinese phone makers, will produce the phones that will launch well within 2014. Um, Mobile World Conference will have uh, 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 samples of both phones available to look at. In particular, uh, Miezo will ship the first Ubuntu devices on the latest, their latest hardware in 2014. Uh, Miezo is one of China's most successful high-end smartphone makers. Uh, they have over 1,000 employees, 600 retail, retail stores, and a global presence in China, Hong Kong, Israel, Russia, and Ukraine. So uh, pretty interesting. Obviously, no other real details other than that were released. But still, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you know, Ubuntu's been trying to get this whole smartphone thing going for quite some time now. So I'm curious to see, now that they've got some signed deals, I'm curious to see how successful they'll be, whether or not the user interface will be good. Uh, uh, it looks like on at least a couple of the handsets, it's going to be paired with Android so you can switch between the two. So uh, should be pretty interesting uh, once those become available. I'll be keeping an eye out for reviews of those. Um, should be pretty awesome. From uh, evertick.com, Previs releases a Linux distribution for Conga Tech computer module. Previs has released a minimal distribution for the QMX6 from Conga Tech. It's a Freescale i.mx6-based COM computer on a module. Um, the release has been done on open source project OE Lite. It's an open source integration tool for industrial Linux distributions. With the release, it is possible for users of Conga QMX6 to start with a Linux where they can choose all the content themselves during integration instead of starting out with a lot of features that's not needed 
and must later be removed. That's kind of really been my biggest gripe with a lot of Linux distributions is they give you everything. And it's like, I don't, I don't want that. Can, can we start with just like a base install and then let me pick and choose what I want? I realize that's less than user friendly, but uh, still, you know, uh, for the power users among us, more often than not, we end up baking our own, you know, version of Linux just so that we can get just what we want. <laughs> not, you know, it's just as much effort to do that as, as it is to go with a standard issue distro and have to remove a bunch of cruft uh, that uh, we don't necessarily want to have installed on our system. Anyway, uh, the next story that we have is from itbusinessnet.com. The, the Linux Foundation has announced a schedule for the annual collaboration summit. Uh, pretty awesome. <clears throat> they have announced uh, keynote speakers for the Linux Foundation collaboration summit taking place March 26th through 28th. 2014 at the Meritage Resort in Napa Valley, California. Uh, the complete schedule will be available online this Friday. This is actually pretty close to me. It's only about a 45 minute drive or so uh, from uh, where I am in California. So I, I might actually try to attend this depending on whether or not I can work my work schedule out. Uh, since the first Linux Collaboration Summit in 2007, the indus software industry has undergone a major transformation. More software today is built collaboratively than ever before, and companies are coming together on an unprecedented number of projects in advance and accelerate to advance and accelerate new technologies. So pretty awesome. I'll definitely be uh, taking a closer look at this just to see if it's something I can even pull off. Um, should be pretty cool, though have kind of a short show uh, this week. That will do it for Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.